Hey everybody, Phil Galfond here with another top five. My producer Thomas is going to throw a category at me. I hope you're ready for it. I'm ready for it. Uh, Thomas, let's go. Beginners often struggle with hand reading. Uh, hand reading is a crucial skill in poker, and what I find beginners often do, pay way too much attention to their hand and the board, how much they like their hand, or they just put their opponent on one hand. You know, their opponent raises preflop and then bets queen seven three, bets the deuce turn, and they're like, well, I put him on ace king because they know ace king is a handy play preflop, and so that's it. And they kind of hope he has ace king. Hand reading is much more complex than that. You need to follow the way that your opponent is played across each street and each time think about the types of hands that he would do that with, uh, types of hands that he would not do that with. Hand reading is a multi-street process. Now, if you're a beginner, you're not supposed to go from zero to 100. Um, you're supposed to kind of work your way up to this and start hand reading a little bit as the hand goes on, but not all the way. So the way I'd suggest you do that by observing the hands that you're not involved in, because when you're involved in the hand, you have so much to process regarding your hand, the board, the bets that are going in, whether you want a better check. There's a lot to think about already. As you progress in poker, as you play a lot more poker, those things become not automatic. Some of them become automatic, but some of them also just become much faster and you have more capacity more mental bandwidth to also process hand reading, to also process tells. Focus on hands that you are not involved in and think when, when one opponent bets the river, what kind of value hand are they saying that they have? Would they have checked the flop with that hand? Would they have bet the turn with that hand or would they have gone for a check raise? Just think through. The more practice you get, the better you're gonna be, the more automatic it becomes. Focus on a lot of the hands that you're not involved in. Not only will you get that practice in hand reading, but you'll actually get information on your opponents um, when they show down their hands or when they don't show down their hands because you're actually paying attention. Most of us uh, do not pay attention once we fold. Beginners often struggle with figuring out what their hand is worth. People play for a little while, they kind of get a baseline gauge of how good a certain hand is, how good a hand needs to be to value bet the river, how good a hand needs to be to call the river or call the turn. But the problem is they're not adjusting enough for all of the various variables that go into that decision. For example, when you're facing a, a pot-sized river bet, when the flop and turn have been checked down, the type of hand that you need to call is not crazy strong. When you're facing a pot-sized river bet after someone bet the flop, bet the turn, and bet the river, you have to keep in mind that your range has been narrowed. By calling those other streets, your range has been narrowed, your opponent's range has been narrowed, not just because of the pot size, but because of how many times each of you have said, I like my hand. The thresholds for what constitutes a good enough hand to call, a good enough hand to value bet especially, uh, go way up. In some spots like button opens, big blind calls, they make a small C bet on a certain board. Um, you can call with a lot of very weak stuff on the flop. If instead under the gun opens and the small blind three bets and then you call and then you're facing a small bet, like ranges are much, much different now. You can't call with as weak of a hand as you could in that button versus big blind single raise pot scenario. So it's basically understanding what hands are worth in the different scenarios. And it's based on how much money has gone in and in what spots the money has gone in. So an open under the gun is not the same as an open on the button. A bet into six people on the flop is not, a, not the same as a bet into one person on the flop. A bet and a call with five players to act behind them is not the same as a bet and a call with nobody else to act or one player to act behind you. So adjust these thresholds based on the way that the action has gone. Take into account how much money has gone in and where it's gone in from. Beginners often struggle with Bluffing. It's a broad category and people struggle in different ways. Some people just bluff every time they have a missed draw. Some people never bluff and everything in between. A really important aspect of bluffing is understanding your value range. And this is essentially hand reading yourself. Given what I did preflop, given the way the boards run out, how many hands do I have that would bet for value? And what size would I bet those hands? Oftentimes people will get to the river, or they have a weak hand, they're like, I can't win unless I bet, so I bet. And they don't even think about what bet size to use. Or they think, well, I want them to fold, so I'm gonna bet really big. Or they'll think, well, I don't wanna risk a lot, so I'll bet really small. People do different things. The way that you should really decide how much to bet with your bluffs is, what's the most common value hand that I have in this spot? And what would I bet with that hand? That's exactly what I should bet with my bluffs so that my opponents can't pick up on the differences. Beginners often struggle with adapting to all the different scenarios in poker. Specifically, the most obvious one is position. When you're under the gun, nine-handed, you need to be very tight. And when you're on the button, nine-handed, and it's folded to you, you need to be a lot looser. 
ace queen is just as good as ace queen it's the same hand you have fewer players to get through and i think what will really help some people although it's kind of advanced theoretical um, and weird to think about is the fact that everything that happens in poker starting with preflop it's all about stealing the blinds, fighting over the blinds. Um, if there were no blinds, there would be no reason to play basically any hands except for aces. Everything is about the blinds. When you're opening preflop, what you're doing is accomplishing two things. One, you have fold equity, you could steal the blinds. And two, because those blinds need to be defended in theory, because other people need to fight over those blinds, you're also getting them hopefully to put in money with worse hands. With the weaker hands in your opening range, you're hoping to steal the blinds. With the stronger hands, you're hoping to get value from people defending those blinds, whether they're in the blinds themselves or in another position. When you open an early position, you know, yeah, you can steal the blinds, but you have eight players behind you with random hands to fight against. Opening weak hands from under the gun is not gonna work out well. However, on the flip side, on the button, you only have two players to get through to steal that one and a half big blinds, uh, maybe more if there's an ante. They're just gonna have two random hands for you to fight against. So now the threshold of how strong of a hand you need to enter the pot gets lowered. Especially if they're extra tight, it, it gets way lowered. And this difference carries over to the next decision and the next decision. If you're in the small blind and you're facing an open raise, you should not three bet the same range against the button as you would against under the gun. Uh, under the gun's opening a much tighter range, so you need to three bet a much tighter range against them. Against the button, they're opening a pretty wide range. You don't need as strong of a hand to three bet them. Uh, and similarly, post-flop, once you see a flop, uh, like you've called a raise out of the big blind, you need to be a lot more careful against under the gun than against the button. Yes, the button's gonna connect with more like low boards than, un than under the gun is going to. So you, they might have some surprise big hands like flop two pair and low straights and things like that. But under the gun, it's gonna have so few bluffable hands uh, as a hand plays out, especially if there are high cards on the board that you need to be very careful. You need to proceed with caution against them, much more caution than you need to against the button. A very important skill that beginners struggle with is bankroll management. It's, it's really key. Whether you are a recreational player who is just playing for fun, you need to then decide how much you're willing to lose and are comfortable losing so that you're playing in a way that you're enjoying yourself, having fun and not playing scared to the point where you're actually losing more money than you would be otherwise uh, if, if you're an underdog in the game. Obviously, some recreational players can be winners in the game too. And then there's even more consideration then to making sure you have an edge because you have a good mindset and you're in a good state of mind because you're playing in a level you're very comfortable with, etc. Now, if you're looking to play professionally or semi-professionally, uh, you need to know how real variance is. There are variance calculators out there. PokerDope.com has a good one. They will show you just how unlucky it's possible to get and for how long. And spoiler alert, it's, it's longer than you think and it's more unlucky than you think. Making sure that you're well rolled, not only to withstand those swings, but also to make sure that you play in a good state of mind. That when you lose five buy-ins, you're not pulling all your hair out. You're like, okay, well, I'm well prepared for this. I have another 95 buy-ins behind. You know, this is just one long session. This was this this time it didn't go well. I have a lot more sessions to play and make that up. I personally did a very bad job of bankroll management. Uh, when I started playing, I started playing as a total beginner and I was playing $10 sit and goes with $100. That's 10 buy-ins. Uh, you can very easily lose 10 buy-ins, especially if you're a beginner. But yeah, bankroll management solves so many problems. Uh, solves so many problems. I hope you found that helpful. I always enjoy uh, doing my best, giving it my best shot of these top fives on the fly. And uh, I look forward to reading your comments, hearing what you thought of it, what you'd like to see more of from me, and that will help me improve in the future. I'm trying to make the best videos I can for you. Until next time, uh, this is Phil Galfon. Take care and good luck.